Welcome to this predictive paper from OnMaths. This paper represents the best guess for the upcoming exams. Please use this paper in addition to your other revision. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMaths site. OnMaths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions, and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing. So we're going to start just by writing this out. So m equals 7 brackets x minus 10. And we're going to put our solving lines in. And I'm going to start by um, expanding the brackets. And we don't need to. We could divide both sides by 7. But I think this is a bit, a bit easier. And we're going to subtract, uh, or we're going to add 70 to both sides. So we're trying to get x as the subject. So we're trying to get x on its own. And we're next going to um, divide both sides by 7. So we have m plus 70, all of that over 7 equals x. So x equals m plus 70 over 7. So we're looking for angle DEC, which is this one here. But we can't go directly there. We've got to kind of work our way towards it. And the first thing I'm going to look at is these set of parallel lines here. And we've got a line going through these parallel lines. Uh, which is this line, if I try and do it without removing it, this line here. And so therefore this angle here and this angle are going to be corresponding. So this is going to be 69 degrees. So I need to write that down properly. So angle C, D, E equals 69 degrees because of corresponding angles okay um, so if I know that the uh, CDE is 69 I also will know that this angle here is 69 because they're the bottom two um, angles in a triangle now when I say that I mean when a an isosceles triangle is the right way up the bottom two angles are equal so they're the bottom two angles in an isosceles, although the isosceles is on its side here. And we need to write that down. So it would be angle DCE equals 69 degrees. And this time it's because it's an isosceles triangle. And finally, we can work out uh, what CED is by taking those away from 180. So angle C, E, D, or actually I should keep it as it says in the question, D, E, C, is equal to 180, take away the 69 plus 69. And the reason for that is angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. And when you do that, you get the answer of 42 degrees so the answer is 42 degrees to subtract mixed numbers we must convert them into improper fractions first so to do that we do the big number times the bottom and add to the top so it's going to be 3 times 4 which is 12 and add to the top which is 15 keep the bottom the same 2 times 5 add to the top so 2 times 5 is 10 add to the top is 11 now we need to get the um, denominators the same so the first number in the 4 and the 5 times table so we just write out the times tables and we can see that 20 is the first number in both of them so we're going to times top bottom of the first fraction by 5 and top bottom of the second fraction by 4 so we must have the denominators the same to be able to add or subtract them in this case subtract them so when we do that, we get 75 over 20. And 11 times 4 is 44 over 20. Subtract the tops, and we get 31 over 20. This is improper, so we can take away one lot of 20 from the top, which will give us 1 and 11 over 20. And that is our answer. So the symbol here basically means and. And the way I remember it is if you draw that symbol and just put a line through it, you can make the word and. 
So we're looking at the probability of getting something that is in A and C. So the only ones that are in A and C are this 8 and this 9 here. So we're going to just add the 8 and the 9 together, which give us 17. Now we need to then work out how many numbers there are in total, so that's all of them. So 4 plus 8 plus 9 plus 5 plus 8 plus 3 plus 11 plus 6. So we need the total, which is 54. And then we get the 17, and we put that over the amount in total, so over 54. So for this question, we need to understand the um, different types of graphs from different functions. So if we have a reciprocal graph, it looks something like this and like this. It could be the other way around and it could be distorted, but it, it basically goes down to a point along here. It goes to infinity and it goes to infinity along a point over here. And it, obviously those positions could change. Um, then we've got a linear graph. A linear graph is just any straight line, so just any kind of straight line, either up or down. Um, and this doesn't look like either of those. Then we've got a um, exponential graph. An exponential graph just starts really small and then just really increases like that and just keeps going up. And here we we kind of have that. Obviously, the other way around, it starts going down. But here it's actually going up, so it can't be a reciprocal graph. So the graph that this is, or could be, is a quadratic graph because it's a nice U shape. So if we carry this on, it could be a nice U shape. Um, it could also be a cubic graph as well. So it could go up and then down and then up, and that's a cubic graph. Um, but the most obvious one is a quadratic graph. So quadratic function. So I'm going to write this question out a bit bigger, just so we've got a bit more room. And we're asked to solve. So what we're going to do with this is we're actually going to start by putting our solving lines in. And we're going to try and figure out what we do to get x on its own. So we're going to start by subtracting 9 to both sides. And so that will leave us with the 10x squared on the left hand side, and then 250 on the right. Then we're going to divide by 10 both sides. So we've got x squared equals 25. And then we're going to square root both sides. Now, this does give us 5, but it also gives us negative 5, because minus 5 times minus 5 is also 25. So our two solutions are 5 and minus 5. So the first thing I notice is the second uh, equation isn't really in the normal format for um, doing simultaneous equations. So I'm just going to... Um, rearrange it so that we have it where we want it to be and I'm just going to put my lines in so I can rearrange so the first thing I want is I want the um, X's and Y's on the same side in fact actually all I need to do is take away 4Y from both sides and we get 5X minus 4Y equals minus 7 okay so what we do now is we put our both our equations down so we can solve these simultaneously so 5x minus 4y equals minus 7 and you notice the coefficient of the y is already the same so we don't need to multiply um, anything um, but the signs are different and the d in different is the d in add so we're going to add going downwards so we're going to add everything So we're doing uh, 3 plus, 3x three plus 5x, which is 8x. 4y plus minus 4y is nothing, which is good, because we want to get rid of that. And 47 take away 7 is uh, 40. All right, let's put our solving lines in. And we're going to divide by 8 both sides. So we get x equals 5. And we're going to substitute that value into one of the equations. I'm going to pick this top one. So instead of 3x, we're doing 3 times 5 plus 4y equals 47. Get my solving lines in. So that will be 15 plus 4y 
equals 47. And then we're going to take away the 15 both sides. And so it's 4y equals um, 47 take away 15, which is 32. Divide by 4 both sides. And we get y equals 8. Now we can check that using this equation here. So 5 times 5 is 25. Take away uh, 4 times 8, which is 32, is minus 7. So we know we've got it right. First thing I'm going to do is add these um, column vectors. So we're going to add the tops first. And then we're going to add the bottoms. So it's plus minus 14. And so at the top it would be minus 4. And 11 take away 14 is minus 3. Then I go pick a point on my shape, and the um, bottom or the top one tells us how far right we're going. So we know we're going four to the left because it's obviously a negative. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. The bottom one tells us how far up we're going. Well, it's going to be down because it's a minus three. So one, two, three. We can do that for each of the other points. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. And when we've done that, we can join them all up with straight lines. And label the new shape B. With this question, you've just got to know what the different functions look like. Um, so with C and D, we've got quadratic functions. One's a positive quadratic, which is a U-shape. One's a negative quadratic, which is a kind of upside-down U-shape or an N-shape. Um, and here we don't have that, so we can get rid of those in our thoughts straight away. Um, a is a positive uh, cubic, which goes up, then down, then up again and b is a negative cubic which is goes down up and then down again so this one here goes up down up again that's going to be a positive cubic so our answer is a so we're going to first of all realize that this is a right angle triangle and we've got two lengths and an angle involved therefore it's going to be trigonometry so we're going to just label the sides first the one opposite right angle is the hypotenuse Opposite the marked angle is the opposite, and the one between the right angle and the marked angle is the adjacent. Now the adjacent doesn't have a number or a letter next to it, so it's not interesting. So get rid of that. Next we're going to do our trigonometry triangles. And so we've got so ka toa. And we are just crossed out the adjacent, so we don't need this one and we don't need this one. And we're going to end up with so, which is short for sine the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. The angle is marked as x, so sine x equals root 3 over 2. You need to know from memory that sine 60 is root 3 over 2. And notice here that the x, therefore, is going to equal 60. So I'm going to write this um, equation again just a little bit bigger so we can work with it. And one of the rules with equations is you want to get rid of brackets and fractions first. So we've got a big fraction here. And basically a fraction just means divide. So we're doing the 82 and we're dividing it by 3x plus 5. Notice I've put a bracket around it because what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite of divide by that bracket. We get times both sides by 3x plus 5 to get rid of that fraction. Now on the left hand side that just gets rid of the fraction so we're just left with 82. On the right hand side well we're doing the 2 times the 3x plus 5. Following my rules to get rid of all the brackets first. So 2 times 3x is 6x, 2 times 5 is 10. And you can use any method you want. Some of you might use this method um, where we've got the 2 here, 3x plus the 5, and then we times them, so 6x plus 
plus 10. That's how we can do it. Any method you like. And then we're going to take away the 10 both sides because we want x on its own. And so we've got 72 equals 6x. And then we're going to divide both sides by 6. And so we've got 12 equals x or x equals 12. A box plot starts with the lowest value. Then it goes to the um, lower quartile. So we have the lowest value, then the lower quartile, and then we have the medium, then the upper quartile, and then the highest value. So lowest value is at one on this one, and normally we just put a little kind of line at the end here. So we're gonna put a line at one, and I'm just gonna put that line there. Ooh, a little bit further to the right, there we go. And our lower quartile is 9, which is kind of where the box starts. So we're just going to start a box there. We're just going to connect these up. There we go. And our median is 11, so we're just going to show that. Quite a thin box plot so far. Now it says the interquartile range is 5. Now the interquartile range is the distance here. So that's five. So it's going to be five more than the lower quartile. If the lower quartile is at nine, it would be nine plus five, which will be 14. So if we get our line at 14, and then complete our, our box plot, here we go. Now the range is the total distance of, or the total width of our box plot, so that's 17. So that's going to be 17 higher than the lowest value. Now the lowest value is 1, so 1 plus 17 is going to be 18. So I'm just going to... There we are. And we're going to have that at 18. And again, I'm just going to put a line there. So we're going to start off with uh, the middle here, and then we're going to make our way to the right, and then we'll make our way to the left. So we're going to start off with 11 to the power of 0, and that's going to just be 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. Then we're going to do 11 to the power of 1, which is just 11. Anything to the power of 1 is itself. And then 11 squared is 121. Now this next one here, 11 to the power of minus 1, whenever you have a negative power, you just put 1 over 11 to the power of 1, or 11. Same with 11 to the power of minus 2, 1 over 11 to the power of 2. 11 squared is 121. So that'll be 1 over 11 and 1 over 121. Okay, so this is not going to be too easy to plot because just it's so difficult to get them low down. And we'll change the colour just to make it a bit easier to see. These are essentially going to be at the bottom. Uh, this goes up to 11, so you can see that a little bit more. And then we've got 121, which will be there. Okay, so whenever you draw the curve, it does help you sometimes to turn your page sideways. Um, I can't do that, unfortunately, but I will try my best. And you want just one smooth, continuous line. And I've kind of dipped a little bit at the end there, which I didn't mean to do, but any of these, any of these graphs will give you full marks. You need to make sure that it's one continuous line that it goes through all of the points and that you don't do any feathering like that. It's just one smooth line joining them up. So the frequency is kind of equal to the frequency density times the class width. And I say kind of because it's actually a proportional relationship. The frequency density doesn't have to be that value. It can be twice the value or half the value. But we're going to assume it is um, because we can check whether it is by the value given to us in the question. So going through each of the groups, the first one is 0 to 10, and it has a frequency density of 0 0.2. So we're just going to do 0 0.2 times 10, which will be 2. The next one has a width of 20, and the frequency density goes up to 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 times 20 will be 16. And the last one is a, group, uh, a class width of 20, and it goes up to 1.2. So we're going to say that that frequency is 24. So if you do 24 plus 16 plus 2, you actually do get to 42. 
So we know that that is um, frequency equals frequency density times class width. Okay, now it says to estimate the amount of rocks that were greater than 15 kilograms. So we're going to draw a line up from 15 kilograms. And we're looking for all the values that were to the right of that line. So we know that there are 24 definitely, okay, because all of that bar is to the right of that line. And we've just got to work out what proportion of this bar is to the right of that line. Well, it's four squares wide, and we're looking at three of the squares. So it's going to be three quarters of 16. So the um, amount we're looking for, so rocks, is going to be three quarters of the 16 plus the 24. So the 3 quarters of the 16 will be 12 plus the 24, which will be 36. When we add fractions or integers and fractions, we need the denominators of the fractions to be the same. And when we've got an integer, we just convert it to a fraction. And here we've got 9k, and we need to convert that to a fraction that is over k plus 9. And the way we do that is we get the 9k and we times it by k plus 9 over k plus 9. And effectively, k plus 9 over k plus 9 is just 1. So we're doing 9k times 1. So we're keeping it the same. We're keeping it as 9k. So what we do um, when we times a, in, or a, a 9k or a term by a fraction is we times the top, the numerator of the fraction. So it's going to be 9k brackets k plus 9 and all of that over k plus 9. Expanding the brackets we get 9k squared plus 81k over k plus 9. And so what I'm going to do is just feed that back in here. And so we've got 9k squared plus 81k over k plus 9 which is just that 9k bit, plus 11 over k plus 9. And whenever we're in this situation here, we just add the numerators. So it's going to be 9k squared plus 81k plus 11, and all of that over k plus 9. And that will be our answer. So let's put that in our answer field. So for this question, uh, first thing to notice is there's a divide there, and we can actually just write this as a fraction. So 10 plus root 2 over 14 plus root 2. I'm going to keep the brackets there. Um, we don't need them when it's in a fraction, but it will help us for the next step. So we're asked to transport this or change this into a fraction without a third at the bottom. And so it's basically asking us to rationalize the denominator. Now, when you have two terms, um, including a third at the bottom, we need to do something a bit special with this. And the thing we do is we times it by the opposite bracket. And what I mean by that is it's, if it's 14 plus root 2, we times it by 14 minus root 2. And we've got to do the same to the top. And the reason for that is essentially here all we're doing is we're timesing it by 1 because 14 minus root 2 over 14 minus root 2 is just 1. So we're times it by 1, so we're not changing the fraction at all. Okay, let's draw a grid to work out what that will equal. And you can use any method you want. You can use um, double smiles and rainbows, foil, whatever method you have um, to multiply two such brackets. I'm going to start off with the top. The top is 10 plus root 2 times 14 minus root 2. So 14 times 10 is 140. 14 times root 2 is just 14 root 2. 10 times minus root 2 is minus 10 root 2. And then a minus and a positive make a minus, and root 2 times root 2 is just 2. Now, with when you expand thirty brackets, these two and these two will add together. Okay, So we're going to start off with the numbers. 140 take away 2 is 138. 
and then we'll do the third. So uh, 14 root 2 take away 10 root 2 is plus 4 root 2. Okay, so the top is going to be 138 plus 4 root 2. And let's do the bottom. And I like these grids because you can see if you've made any mistakes quite quickly with these. You can check your working. So 14 plus root 2 times 14 minus root 2. And you'll see why in a second we do the opposite. So 14 times 14 is 196. Uh, 14 root 2 minus 14 root 2 and then minus 2. So you can see here now there's a 14 root 2 plus minus a 14 root 2. Let's just cancel each other out to 0. So we get rid of the third. And then 196 take away 2, which is 194. So we've got 194 at the bottom. Now something we notice here is that the uh, all the terms in the fraction are even. Therefore, we can halve everything. So 138 halved is 69. 4 root 2 halved is 2 root 2 and um, 194 halved is 97 and so that would be 69 there and that would be 2 and then that would be 97. It's always important with these questions to realize what the normal graph will look like um, before we um, have a look at what the um, new um, function will look like. So it's always good to remind yourself what a y equals sine x graph looks like and it fluctuates between 1 and minus 1 uh, if I write a minus 1 and it goes up first of all at 90 goes back down at 180 down to minus 1 at 270 and then back up at 360 so it's just a simple sketch to help us figure out what's going on with the transformed one so first thing I notice is there is a negative here, which just means it will be flipped in the x-axis. So this would become like this. And there's also a 2 there, so we're multiplying all the y-coordinates by 2. So instead of this going down to minus 1, it will start by going down to minus 2, and it will go up all the way to 2. So we've got a nice idea of how this will look. And so we're going to just start plotting this now, I think. So it will go down at 90, uh, which is so there, to minus 2, back up to 180 at 0, and then back up to 2 at 270, down to 360, and then it will just go again, 540 up there and then back down. Not the perfect, uh, not the best graph I've ever drawn, but I think the uh, examiner will understand that I know what the graph will look like, so don't panic about making too many mistakes when you're drawing curves. Um, just try your best to get it as low as possible, but don't um, go back and start um, feathering the lines or anything. Here we've got a half on the outside, so our function's been multiplied by half, and all that's going to do is it's going to halve each of the y-coordinates. So we've got a y-coordinate here, and half of 6 will be 3. The 3 we've got here will be 1.5. The bottom of the curve here will be at 1. And if you just go through and just halve all of the, all of the points on the um, graph. And when you do that, you should be able to draw in the graph and it should look something like this. I'm going to try our best to draw it. And we're not looking for it to be absolutely perfect, but looking at that, you can clearly see that all of the y coordinates have been halved. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMaths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions, and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing.